This is DayZ, we're here on Xbox Series X, and we're doing a walkthrough of the game, that's right, teaching tricks, teaching you how to play to a degree, and generally helping you out from the start, and if you like this sort of thing, you find it interesting, or you want to see more of it, be sure to like the video, and subscribing's great as well. So I've had some success in the past in regards to doing some, you know, walkthrough-esque videos for DayZ on different platforms. So I thought, hey, let's start from the beginning. We haven't done this sort of thing on the Series X yet. Let's dive in and have some fun. So a lot of this game is about scavenging. And we're playing in a vanilla server here just so that you can see the game as its purest. I would suggest perhaps instead playing in a server that is like, you know, a custom server or something as it's much easier. But if you want to play the true and more intensive version of DayZ, Obviously, playing it this way is the way to go. And we are in a very different kind of spawning area. Okay. We are going to kind of balance our food and our water because our bars are looking a little bit weak there. So I'm going to try to get those up a bit and also try not to get too sick. So in DayZ, as I man or mentioned, management of resources is very important. And also knowing where you are too, kind of getting an idea of like the different places. There's so many different towns and cities and whatnot. You can spawn anywhere. So these signs are absolutely fantastic for just being like, hey, this is where you're at. There's online maps. I usually used to use, I think it was like daisy.gg or something like that. There's a daisy map you could use. You can also find a map in the game. That's right. And you can figure out exactly where you are on the map. So we are right up here. And we're probably honestly going to go up into uh, Brazino there, I would imagine. A uh, very common place, or well, usually where you always spawn is along the coast. So that's typically where you end up starting. And then you can move inland towards all these different places and whatnot. And I've explored, I think, most of the map at this point uh, throughout my ver various videos and stuff like that. I mean, if you've been following along for a long time, you've known I've done a, a lot of Daisy over the years. It's been wild. So boats can be somewhat good for food. There was a point where they like kind of got rid of food from boats and then they brought it back and yeah. So with food, you don't want to eat too much of it or you get sick. You also got to be careful with different things to see how like, you know, is it going to be contaminated and get you sick if you're drinking from something. You know, back in the day when I was doing these videos, you could literally like just drink out of like a pond and there was no real sickness or anything like that. I also hate how you're vision and everything is like obscured now when you've got stuff on i guess it's more realistic but yeah this game just technically sometimes is a real pain so you'll notice i also go into different rooms and i usually click the the back button there that's because the vicinity button is the best way to basically tell me is there something here i might not visually notice something and there might be something there i can grab so that's a good idea. I also love going by the different greenhouses because you'll find like food and stuff or water in them. And then there's like usually orchards you can go through and you might find an apple or something like that on the ground if you are lucky. And uh, that's another good way to get food. So basically the goal is to gather food supplies and then make your way inland in order to gather, you know, additional resources and stuff like that. But I think we are going to head uh, to Rosino because that place is pretty busy. I don't really want to go to Slichnich as that one is usually pretty deadly. That one's right there. It's a big spawn point a lot of people end up going to. So yeah, we're going to go... Usually we visit the little kind of area. There's like a little inlet, like a little place of housing along the road. I love to visit it because a lot of people ignore it. So I don't think we're going to do that today because we're a little bit further up north. But yeah, it's like just a little in-cropping of houses I like to visit. Uh, these ones might be good, but there's quite a few zombies, so I'm going to elect to ignore that right now. Yeah. Don't need to deal with that, but let's let's head north and, and let's find what we can get, uh, or find out where we're headed and what we'll come across. So you can definitely you can see signs. Usually you say follow the highway, follow the rail tracks. That'll let you kind of know where you're going and not trail off too much. I'm going to focus a little bit more on kind of the beach because I want to gather, you know, food and resources. I am running, which isn't necessarily the best of ideas. Honestly, if you have the time and you're not making like a video showcasing the game, uh, I would suggest actually taking your time when you're moving through the world uh, because it will conserve your food and your energy a lot better. 
and always be on the lookout for other people because uh, they're not your friends. I also, you know, while drinking water from bottles is really good, I would suggest kind of drinking things from like pop and whatnot because there's a, you know, there's a chance you can get sick and stuff like that. Uh, it seems like with almost any water source in this game, which is ridiculous, but the way it goes. So we're actually going to trail off this path and we're going to go to an area that just kind of to the side of Brazino, but usually you find some decent resources there and that's this kind of road. But yeah, there's a couple ways to go. The railroad, typically a little quieter. Uh, the main road, you're a lot more visible. The beach, that's kind of a little bit more scavenging for, you know, kind of items and whatnot. Uh, keep in mind that when you're running around and moving, that the sound is going to attract the zombies in the area in the vicinity. Uh, so usually you want to also move around a little bit slower. A, as I said, to conserve your food resources and your water resources. But B, just so you don't bring in a whole lot of zombies, because uh, zombies aren't necessarily fun to deal with because they can kill you. I wouldn't say they're as, uh, uh, they're, they're deadly, but they're not as deadly as like another player would be. Other people are your main threat in this game. There's actually an earlier walkthrough video I did uh, on like PlayStation there. And I think it was PlayStation that did that one where or essentially I was just kind of like walking by somebody that had a gun and I was like, eh, he's got a gun, but you know, doesn't have any ammo in it. He won't shoot me and I just walked by. It was, it was a very funny moment actually. Yeah. So one thing I like to do, which is kind of a little deadly and usually gets you hit, is kind of trapping zombies in places. That way I don't have to directly fight them. And they are kind of, like, disposed of, if that makes sense. Like, you know, they, they aren't going to be bothering me at all. <laughs> being, being locked in there, right? So that's typically a little bit of a safer way to deal with the undead, is to... You know, just kind of distract them and move them into different places. What is tracksuit pants, but they're phased through the floor? Unbelievable. Yeah, so th this is a little bit more of a, a casual move through and talk and, and dive into the game. And keep in mind that your experience when you play this, assuming you're trying to follow this as a direct walkthrough kind of thing, is going to be entirely different. That's why it's hard to do these types of videos for Daisy, because the experience is going to be wildly in fluctuation based on you know where you spawn what you're doing what you get you know your, your supplies and everything like that and uh, who you spawn by sometimes you get really unlucky and you get like high tier people that are like camping the beachside doing weird things and other times you don't run into anyone it's all convenience luck and very very random yeah, and if you're kind of wondering how to connect with other people, you know, you literally... Because there is an invite friends option, but you you literally have to find people in the game. You'd have to like be like, oh, we're going to meet up here and stuff. So it's not like you can just call a friend to come in and give you a hand and whatnot. So most of the time, you're very much out on your own in this game, and you have to be able to handle that. And it's definitely not going to hold your hand. So... That's the pathway, uh, Brazino over there. And then we've got another little, kind of a little town area here. I'd like to go to this spot occasionally. It's a little bit off, but uh, there's typically more resources there left because people don't really go to this one as much. So you can find lots of good stuff and stuff that's not really as looted. And I believe this has like a separate naming convention from Brazino. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Anyways, we'll, we'll see the sign up there. We'll, we'll know what we're talking about. I, I typically leave areas like this alone because they don't really have a lot of resources. Uh, but, you know, that house might have something. And these little box areas, you could end up with, like, a weapon or something, which is why I typically take a look at them. But notice that there are uh, there are zombies and stuff nearby. Let's see, there we go. We got a raincoat. I'm wondering if I should tear that thing up as rags. Oh, that's a buckshot. It's not going to be super helpful, but... Um... You know, if we get a shotgun, obviously they could come in handy. And these, uh, I call them like the storage wars containers. So you get finding like, uh, basically like car parts and stuff in them. They're also perfect for uh, dealing with zombies. One of my favorite little zombie trap spots is just uh, getting them into these places. And uh, then they can't do anything to you, right? Pretty easy going. 
Yeah, it's one of my favorite maneuvers, but be careful because the game really does have like a lag factor to it. And there are a lot of times where you can get kind of like stuck in doors and stuck in walls and stuff. And that obviously isn't the best to deal with. Yeah, yeah, come over here. And their screams will usually alert other zombies too. So when I talk about the pathing for zombies is so like kind of glitchy. But you gotta deal with it, because that's daisy. Uh, that actually looks like it's terrible condition, but it's better than my range. Is it actually better? How, how, how damages my rain jacket? Worn. Yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna, even though it's more inventory, I'm just gonna go with the rain jacket, because I think it's a little less broken down. I mean, I could check more in-depthly, but yeah. And don't forget to occasionally change your shoes, because your shoes can actually break down and tear in this game, and that will cause uh, bleeding in your foot, and you'll be like, why am I cut? And it'll be like, because your shoes, and I'll be like, what, why? And it's, I'm just like, that's how the game is, you know? That's how she goes. Definitely not an easygoing experience, that is for sure. I don't typically check these buildings anymore unless there's been a big update change where they started adding items in them. It's typically not worth uh, diving into those things. Okay, and now we can go check out the housing. That that might have like a crowbar or something in it, but eh, I'm not going to really bother with it. I'm going to go into more of the actual housing searching because I'm sure people are more intrigued about kind of scavenging through houses and stuff like that because there's going to be hopefully supplies in here, right? And again, always greenhouses... Even if you don't get directly food, you might get seeds so that you can grow food yourself, which is helpful. I think that zombie noticed me. Perfect. Hmm. Hmm. Nothing else really in here. I kind of want to trap that zombie on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think my strategy for zombie dealing is pretty effective. I know a lot of other people like to like crouch around or fight and stuff like that. Oh, it looks like somebody's actually been semi-preparing the plots. Oh yeah, no, they definitely were. And there's no food left, so maybe somebody came and took all the food, but yeah, they definitely were doing some preparation here. Quilted jacket. Damaged. All these damaged. And you can repair stuff, but... I'm not really in a position where I'm set up to be repairing things. This is the police place, we'll check that out in a sec. Sometimes it's a good policy to close doors on your way in if you actually don't want to be like interrupted while you're going about scavenging stuff. I just wonder if there's something in the closet where it's like all this blood trail kind of leading into it. Rarely. Like these buildings, there's rarely stuff in them. But it doesn't hurt to sometimes take a look. I haven't really come across anything too terrifying or bad yet today. It's actually been a pretty relaxed time. Sometimes you get something good here. A four digit combo thing. That won't come in handy anytime soon, but it's something I'll pick up in case I want to use uh, later on. So we've got the police building here. I'm very, very likely this place has been looted out, but let's go take a look and see if we can find anything that might be useful to our particular causes. No, not really seeing anything yet. Okay, let's get up to second level. Pipsy? Good old Pipsy. You might find like, uh, oh, okay. And what do you know? We have ammo for it. What are the odds? Seriously, it's statistically unlikely. Anything in here, though? Nope. This is the this is the room where you most typically come across, uh, you know, weapons and stuff like that. You might find the odd SMG or weapon, just like gun, lying around in these types of rooms, like the I don't know what you would call them, the computer rooms. But most of the time, it's in the lockup is where you find the actual guns in these places. And uh, not usually anything up on the roof level. But it's a good way to survey the land and see if there's any zombies or bad guys around. And at least I've got a shotgun now, so I'm just going to hotkey that over there so that I can just hold RB and then grab it if I need to. 
I don't typically bother with the roofs. I did see some food areas here. I'd prefer to have like a melee weapon. You know, at the moment, because the shotgun's pretty loud, but uh, you know, it's a good defensive weapon. Might keep people away. No, of course, the zombie saw me. Can't say I'm surprised. Ah, she got some good slaps in there. Uh huh. So there's actually a few zombies in this spot. I think of the smartest way to kind of get them away. Oh, there's the there's the grocery store here. Oh crap! I didn't actually close that properly. So you see my screen is uh, fading a little bit there. That's because I've gotten some really aggressive hits thrown against me by the zombie. So that kind of shows you're getting a little like it's you have the potential to get like get knocked out and stuff if that keeps kind of going. So it's usually a sign of like, hey, get out of the way of danger. Sometimes you need to fight through it, but you know. That's how she goes. Oh, come on. And sometimes you find food and matches and other things in the grocery store. I don't really see anything else in there that we can grab. This is a good little military area where you might find a weapon or two, but I need to get rid of the zombies. I'm also burning through a lot of my food and water allotment, not typically finding a good spot to bring the zombies into, because I need it to be open so that I can get out the other side. Okay. Hmm. No, I don't like this scenario. <laughs> this isn't a good building for this. Okay. Let's keep moving around. And they're going to kind of just keep following me, I would imagine, for a bit. The zombies, they don't typically get, like, confused. Oh, no, they're actually... Hmm. Yeah, most of the time, they're, like, pretty determined. A jacket is actually probably better than what I have at the moment. Although, this one looks really torn up again. Why is my raincoat this best option? No, I thought there would be a zombie that would follow me. All right, well, since they seem distracted, let's go and run back and check out the little military and or police area here and see what we can find in this place. See, this is where you'll find your guns and stuff and your ammo. There's actually usually a ton of things in these buildings. Ah, these are better pants. The military fatigues usually are because they'll have more slots. Little disappointed in the stuff in this one. Usually you find some ammo in that, but nope. Okay, let's go check out the little military spot here. Again, not trying to draw too much attention, but obviously that lady zombie has seen us. Put the gun down. Oh, geez, now I've been cut. So I've been wounded, which is not good. Don't let them get you caught into a corner. Where did that lady come from? And obviously my food is now low, but we need to prioritize the fact that uh, we need to bandage up. And the food mark being like that is not good. I do not like it. And my health is semi-low, which is not good either. Yeah, so we're going to have to be semi-smart, because obviously I want to gather what I can in here, but I'm not really going to be able to without getting rid of some of these zombies, which are going to be a big problem. I also should have maybe focused a bit more on house exploration to gather food supplies and whatnot. Oh, wow. What are the odds of this? Seriously. I, I honestly can't even believe that. <laughs> Is this like single shot? Oh, jeez. Oh, they're, uh... Sometimes the game has glitches that you have to deal with, and that's one of those situations where, uh... The, the glitches definitely did not work out in 
my favorite. Usually you, you would want the cap too, but I'm also trying to move semi-fast. I guess we will give the water a try, because our resources are going down quite a bit. Which is not good. And we will put the hat on. So we could shoot and fire at the zombies, but obviously not the smartest of ideas to do that. Really? And I got cut again? Oh, jeez. Okay, well, I'm going to take this opportunity to bandage myself up. Notice how the screen is getting more saturated as I continue to lose blood. But typically, I will want to kind of bait the zombies in here. Yeah, come on. That is a lot of zombies. So once again, it seems like their pathing is a little messed up because there might be too many of them. Which could also mean that they are going to act uh, a little random, if that makes sense in regards of acting like maybe they shouldn't be acting, which makes them very hard to predict. You are trying to run away from them and not die, like myself right now, and I'm thinking that there might be food in here. Honey, perfect. That's exactly what I need in order to deal with my food issue that has is, uh, arisen at the moment. Great, so let's uh, let's enjoy some honey before we die. So, obviously, you can tell from drinking the water, I got sick. <laughs> well, maybe you can't tell, obviously, at the moment, but if you look at the bottom right there, you can see that uh, I have, like, the sickness icon, so I am now sick with something, which means we very likely need to take some pills in order to deal with that, and it could increase a level of sickness for our character as well. So, obviously, everything is working just swimmingly. Absolutely swimmingly. Okay, food. These, uh, wow, the zombies, they, uh, they get you, they get on you, don't they? Just in case that door is open there. We're getting a lot of ammunition today. It seems like the loot economy has improved a lot in this game, to be honest. Yeah. Come on, zombie, get in here. Again, shooting is not, like, the best way to deal with stuff. If anything, it's just gonna, most of the time, draw way too much attention to you. And get yourself killed. There is also, like, a medical spot. Wow, there are a lot of zombies around here. I think there's typically a medical spot in the city as well that I like to go to. But I'm dealing with a... allotment of zombies that I am... Trying not to handle, or trying to handle the best I can. Oh, and sometimes the second level is, like, really good in these places. I found guns in it before. Like, second levels, I found guns in those ones, so. Those buildings. Uh, sometimes something to keep in mind. If you go and scavenge up there, you might find something helpful. Is the broom any good? Like, the broom's, like, a new thing. Every time I try to use it, it just, like, absolutely falls apart. So I'm, like, always trying to figure out why exactly the broom is in this and what exactly it does. I'm intrigued by the broom. I, I really don't get its purpose, but I am definitely intrigued by it. I also love this building for like evading zombies because you can kind of like block off the middle here by using the uh, the, the furniture set, if that or not the furniture set, the table and stuff. It's a beautiful spot for uh, zombie evasion. Absolutely beautiful. So we've done a, a lot of trekking around. We've gathered some a little bit more supplies. I'd like to go to Brazino now, but I do want to go back to that tent in order to gather enemy or gather enemies. In order to gather supplies. Am I really out of resource uh, space? That is hilarious. Potato? Yeah, I have the potato in my hand, but I cannot eat it. So we're gonna get rid of that.
They make it so you can't eat potatoes in this now? That's weird. At least we got a whole jar of honey. And a uh, wider little town area to go through. Oh, that's cool. So that's a kitchen timer. It's a good little distraction uh, thing for the zombies. And that lady is still in that spot. Unbelievable. Oh, those smoke grenades. Those are fun. And a pistol. Which I don't believe we have uh, a magazine for, but something to have on hand. So we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, creative inventory management, I think, here. Yeah, this building is closed off because I've got a number of supplies, but I don't really have good space. Oh, a school back and it's got a gun in it? A school backpack with a gun in it. 10.62. See what kind of rounds we have. We have three or point three oh eight by five. That's seven six two by three three nine. Those are matches. Yes, yeah, the IG seventy. So this one is by three nine. So we could actually use the hunting rifle. So why is oh, it takes twenty seven slots for that? Oh my 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 my. Okay, so we got a bunch of badly damaged weapons, which is hilarious. We got a rifle that we could actually use. We only got four shots, though. All, all of my stuff is like, you've got like four shots, that's it. But I'd like to have the pistol, which means we should probably get rid of the jacket. Yeah. Because I don't think we really have anything that we can, like, tear this jacket up with. Okay, we're going to going to drop that. Oh, there's just a gun here in this men's suit jacket. A gun that we happen to have the magazine for. That is uh, very convenient. <laughs> very, very convenient indeed. Okay, I'm just going to hotkey a bunch of stuff. We actually got pretty loaded up for weapons and stuff like that. The loot economy in the vanilla servers has actually improved a lot. It's it's a lot more playable now, I would say, with the the stuff I found here. Typically there's nothing under these tents. Yeah, again, not not surprised. Maybe I think in Brazino where there's the the medic thing. I know there's a medic thing in Brazino, but I'm also just kinda like trying to think of uh, you know, more medical supplies would be helpful. A lot of it is is learning the different like locations and stuff and the layout of them really dude. Seriously zombie. This is a bit of a crowded death place. But it works all the same. All right, let's head over to the uh adjacent town area here. But we are coming close to the end of this adventure and again, if you did enjoy you know, this kind of daisy walkthrough type of experience and found it like helpful and stuff. Liking the video is great and subscribing is great and letting me know so that we can uh, continue this sort of thing if you'd like to see that uh, kind of continued onwards. Hmm. Yeah, I, I do wish I could deal with this sickness, but we're gonna have to find pills. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to find pills. Be careful of drops. The drop may not seem like a bad like thing or a big deal, but you'd be surprised how many times I've been severely injured by those drops, and it's just like completely detrimental at times. Even the innocent drops can be the drops that end your life out here. It's a brutal game of survival. Absolutely brutal. But hey, I've got some guns, I've got some... Food, I've got some resources. It's not a, a bad setup that I have going on here. And then the all crucial part is logging out and making sure that you're safe for X amount of times. So typically find a building or a spot where you think oh, you're not going to get attacked and then, yeah, 